Okay, there we go. Sorry. Okay, now we have only so far in this class done what they call a two column proof. Like you make your statement, you make your justification, you're done. There are two other types of proofs. We're just going to do one other type in here, and it's called a flow proof. And that's what you see on this um, beginning of the notes for like today. It is literally like a flow chart. That's why they call it a flow proof. Um, the third type is called a paragraph proof. Um, we're not going to do that in here because that's literally like writing your proof into an essay. And we're not going to do that. Okay, so we're just going to do the two column and the flow proof. The flow proof will have probably a little bit more information than I would ask you to do in a two column proof. Um, but basically, it's like a flow chart for how to get different congruent parts. So this will have more information than I would ask you to do in a two-column proof. We're just going to walk through this today. If I give you a flow proof, it's literally just going to be fill in the blank. So you might fill in a justification or you might fill in um, a reason, but you're not going to have to fill in anything else. It'll be all laid out for you. So you'll see these a couple problems to practice this on the homework today. Okay, so this is just another format for laying out a proof. Now, here's what I have. In the lovely diagram here, I have this line, which they label with that little cursive L, is perpendicular to AB in the diagram. And so because of that, you'll see they've already marked in the picture that that's going to give you a right angle. If you have perpendicular lines, right, they run into each other at a right angle. I'm going to also go ahead and mark the angle right next to that because that would also be a 90 degree angle just so I have that. The next thing it says is L, which is that same line, bisects AB at C. So if I bisect, and they've already drawn this into the picture for you, if I bisect the segment it cuts it into two equal segments, so AC and CB are congruent, they've already marked that. And then it just says P is a point that's on this line. Okay, now most of the time when you have a flow proof, the beginning part of it or kind of like anything on the left side might just be a literal copy of what they have in the given information, which is what you're gonna see here. These two things are just stated up here in the given information. I don't have you guys do that in a two column proof because it makes them really long. I just have you tell me the triangle part, um, but in a flow proof, they will list that stuff. All right, so. It says ACP, which again, if you want to number the angles, you can, but they use the letters in the diagram here. These two angles we have marked are right angles. I would just say for that, like something like definition of perpendicular, it told me that line L was perpendicular to that segment AB, so we knew those had to be right angles. Or if you just said, you know, I know perpendicular lines, my word is not coming to me, create. 90 degree angles, something like that. Just they're both 90 degree angles. They have to be from perpendicular lines. Okay, I'm just going to, this whole flow goes into those two angles are being congruent. Um, I would say if they're both right angles, they have to be congruent to each other. So they're both just 90 degrees, right? I can see that in the picture. So that gets me in that lovely diagram a set of angles. So all that I would literally have just had you do as one step in a two column proof. I would have just had you say those two angles are congruent to each other because I've got those perpendicular lines. All right, now the second step says L bisects A, B at C. That's literally just a copy of what they have written right there. So this was just copying the given information. Now, because I know that bisects, that gives me those two congruent segments. That's already marked in the picture for us. So this is just definition of a bisector. A bisector cuts something into two equal pieces. In this instance, it's two equal sides. So if I was having you guys do a two column proof, like those two things would be the, maybe the first two steps. Okay, nothing leading into this last piece right here, which just says PC is equal to itself. So let me mark that in the picture real quick. I'm just going to put a double mark. So PC is a segment that is in both of the two triangles there. What would you use for your justification for that? Reflexive, good. All right, so something equals itself. It's just that reflexive property. Can anybody, and we can draw the two triangles separate if it might make us see us see this better, but what um, 
what like what are the reasons? Like we got side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 angle side. Side angle, how do you know? Um A A B have a both uh, a right angle button. Yeah. Exactly. Said so that really well. This is a side. This is your right angle, and then reflexive gave us that side. So if I just, either one of those triangles, I can make that argument side, angle, side. So I would look for that SAS as the reason those two triangles are congruent. Does anybody have any question about the flow curve? Okay, now, what we're actually going to work on today mainly is construction. And part of our standards is that you guys are supposed to be able to construct congruent triangles. So I just literally down here at the bottom have a triangle. So we're going to copy this triangle. And to do that, I am going to use the side, side, side method. And I'm trying to scooch this up so I have a little more room on the paper. OK, I promise this is not difficult. I promise. But you do need a contractor. Does anybody else need one that I didn't get? You got one? All right, everybody else has one. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, so we have constructions in almost all the units first semester, not not every single one, but what I'm going to do here is find my pen. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to do this using side, side, side. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm just going to write this down, I do have videos on Canvas that will show you how to do this if you want to go back and watch it. Um, I'm literally just going to draw a line. And my intention is going to be to copy AC. And you can copy any side of the triangle. I usually, if there's like a plain horizontal line as part of the picture, that's usually the one I copy. Or if there's a vertical line, something that would be easy. Um, I'm going to draw a line. And uh, when I do that, I want to try to make it longer than what you think AC looks like in the original diagram. Like it doesn't have to be crazy, but just try to make it a little bit longer because we're actually going to use the contractor to ensure that we're measuring the side correctly. All right, so I'm going to come down kind of as far as I can and get this still on the screen. But I'm literally just this using the straight side of my contractor. I'm just drawing a line and just try to make it longer than what you think AC looks like in the original picture. All right, once you do that, you're going to put the little gold part on A in the original diagram, and you want to find a hole that goes through C. And just real quick, let me remind you guys, I'm going to come down to where I drew that line. I'm going to make the end point here. I'm going to call that A prime. If I'm trying to copy A, we just call that A prime. It looks like A, almost like to a little first power next to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the gold on A up here in the original drawing and just kind of move this around until you can get a hole that goes right through C. Mine looks like it's about 90. Does that sound? Okay. All I'm going to do, I'm literally just going to slide over to where I drew that line and I have my pen in the little hole that says 90 and I'm just going to make a tiny little arc. All right, so I'm going to move to A prime and I'm going to make an arc using that hole that I just found in the step right above. So I it was 90 on mine, so I just wrote that down. Um, as part of the direction. So I put it on A, moved it down to A prime, make an arc. This is going to mean where these intersect, you're going to get C prime. So that way I'm using the construction tool to actually measure that. I'm not using like the centimeters or inches. You, that's not considered a construction. Making that arc is considered making that construction. So when we're finding that hole, we're matching that up. That is copying side AC. Okay, now the rest of this, I'm basically going to do the same thing, but on two different points to get where B should be at to make this triangle. All right, so you're going to put the gold piece on A in the original, and you want to find the hole that goes through B. So I'm going to put the gold piece on A. Bless you, and I'm going to find the hole that goes through B. So just move this around a little bit. 
Um, I don't have a number right next to the one that I think be. It's one, two, three, four, maybe about 45. Okay, now, if especially if it doesn't have a number in it, I literally will just stick my pen or pencil just right in there. Okay, now, just drag this down to where you were making your construction. Put the little gold piece on A prime, and I'm just going to make just a little arc the hole that went through B. Just make a little arc. It doesn't have to be huge or anything like that, but I'm just going to make an arc. So I move the gold piece to A prime, and I'm just making an arc using the hole I just figured out in the previous step. Now, I'm just literally going to repeat that, but the, the only difference is going to be I'm going to put the gold on C in the original, and then I want to find the hole that goes through B, so that same point. We're trying to, basically, what I'm going to do here once we get this is we're going to copy the other two sides is what's going to happen. So, put the little gold piece on C in the original drawing. Just move this around till you figure out which hole goes through B. Mine looks like about maybe 76. And then what, and then what do you do if you want to do the physical arc and then you can take the quantity of that you Exactly, exactly. You just go slide over here. Now, make sure you put the little gold on C prime because we were on C there. Make an arc using that little hole you just did. Perfect. This is going to be then, the intersection of those two arcs is going to be B prime. And then we just have to play connect the dots to make the triangle. So I'm just going to finish writing this out. I move the gold um, to C prime. And I just made a little arc using what my measurement was in that previous step. Okay, the intersection of the arcs should be your B prime. Now I'm trying to copy the triangle. So right now I don't have a triangle. I just have like a, a line segment and this random point. So you do have to go back and draw the other two sides of the triangle. All right, so just connect B prime to A prime, B prime to C prime, and then you have constructed a triangle congruent to the one we started out with. We're going to practice this again. Is anybody having a question so far? Okay, I'm not going to write the directions out this time, but I will definitely scan this, put it on Canvas. I do have a video that will go through it with you. And I'm just going to do one more. I'm just going to do one more. I'm not going to show you the side angle side method because if I'm being honest with you, it's way harder and Frankly, it's annoying. So we're just going to do this one. Okay, so I'm just going to show you side, side, side. If you're really interested, I will show you side, angle, side, but I promise it's more difficult, and why make things more difficult? We don't need to do that. I'm not going to have you. I'm just going to let you use side, side, side. On the homework, on the quiz, you could just use side, side, side. I promise it's way easier to remember. But on, but is it, are they going to do Nope, 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 nope. We're just going to do this one. So don't worry about it. You're not going to be asked to do the other. If you're interested, I will show you how to do it. Okay, so see if you can remember what we did on the front. I'm going to try to copy this triangle. So just going to do it one more time. So the first step is literally to just draw yourself a line longer than one of the sides that you might want to copy. If it's me, I would probably just copy the bottom of this triangle, which is AB. So I'm just going to try to make a line a little bit longer than what they have in the original picture. And I'm just gonna call, I can label one of the endpoints, I'm gonna call this A prime. Now to construct a congruent side, I actually have to make a little arc and a mark. We can't just measure it, that's not considered a construction. So to do that, I'm gonna just go ahead and put this gold piece on A in the original. And you just gotta figure out which hole best goes through Point B. So you might just move it around a little bit. Mine looks like maybe about 59. 
Once you have that, and this is totally up to you, I usually just maybe stick my pen or pencil or whatever I'm working with in the hole. Just slide it over to your construction. Put the little gold piece on A prime, and I'm just making a little arc, and that act of making that, that little arc there, that's considered the construction. Where that arc intersects your line you drew, that's gonna be B prime here. And that way, I am ensuring that that segment is the same length as A, B in the original. Okay, now we're basically gonna do the same thing, but from two different points to get the point that I don't have in the triangle yet, which is C in this picture. To do that, you're just gonna put little gold piece on A, and then figure out which hole on your little contractor best goes through C. I'm gonna just let you use this method we're doing right now. Don't worry about it. All right, so this looks like maybe like 70, I think. Or no, I can't count, 68. Just slide over here to your construction, A prime, and make a little arc. And then I'm just gonna repeat that. I'm gonna put the little gold piece on B, find a hole that goes through C. Mine looks like about maybe 65. Slide over to your construction, make a little arc. And where those two arcs intersect, that's going to be the third point in your triangle, C prime for this picture. And then all you have to do once you got that point to actually make the congruent triangle is get the other two sides constructed. Just use the straight edge side of your contractor. You connect A prime to C prime. Oops. And you're going to connect C prime to B prime. And then that should be a copy of that triangle. Is anybody having a question? Okay, now on the homework today, I should just have um,